Larry Pickering and James Darby. Now I've got a blog, there's a few hundred thousand people following me. I just do cartoons on the political thing and, and do a couple of stories a day. You've got the, the Labour Party, which um, people get disenchanted with the Labour Party, they can move to the Greens. Yep. People get disenchanted with the Liberal Party or the Coalition. Where do they move? There's no one there. Yeah. There's a big vacant space. The only way to protect Australia from the United Nations and from those that will invade us is by having a buoyant, prosperous, wealthy nation. Here on the Gold Coast, a controversial new mosque development has just been cancelled after much protest by the local residents. Can you tell us about that? Uh, the Kurumban Mosque, yeah, I was, um, I was down at that protest, there's a few things to say, and uh, fortunately that didn't go ahead. But... Um, I mean, these things aren't going to be stopped by, um, by protesting about car parks and, and proximity to houses and things. I mean, it goes far deeper than that. It's whether we want this, this sort of thing in an Australian um, environment, mm -hmm. because overseas it's been an absolute disaster. And we need to learn from what has happened there. Yeah. Multiculturalism hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a thing about Islam that, that, that's worrying uh, in that, that they seem to want to destroy us. Um, I mean, I, I love all our immigrants. I mean, I think we've got a great multicultural society, yep. but they must join us. Yeah. They can't come here and say, into my lounge room and say, you've got to change this, you've got to change that, and unless you do, I'll cut your head off. I mean, I'm just going to tell them to get out. Yeah, exactly. And that's my right to do that. Yeah. And that should be everyone, every Australian's right to do. The Muslim faith is um, it's just poles apart from anything we've ever known. Yeah. yeah. And um, it, it, it cannot assimilate. It, it refuses to assimilate. It doesn't want to assimilate. It wants to drive itself into enclaves and ghettos. It wants to impose a Sharia law that we... It's totally alien to what our law is. Yeah. Um, it wants us to fit in with them. Well, that was okay if I'm going to uh, Libya or somewhere, but, yeah. but I'm not. They're coming here. Yeah. So therefore, they should fit in with us. Now, that's not too much to us. No, sure. I agree. But I think each new mosque built costs initially $3 million a year in added security, added surveillance, the increased crime rate, the extra jail time. Every time a mosque gets approved, it's another three mil. Mm -hmm. Well, three mil doesn't sound a great deal of money when you've got the sort of, when, when uh, Gillard was borrowing a uh, hundred mil a day uh, towards the end of her reign. But I think that uh, we've got to, someone's got to do some real figures on how much a mosque costs us. Can we afford, I, we could probably afford one and a half percent Muslim population, mm -hmm. but now it's creeping up, up, up to two and a half the cost of having Islam in your country is absolutely phenomenal. The Islamic immigration is also a very controversial issue here in Australia. What are your thoughts on the multiculturalism in the particular Islamic immigration? Well, it hasn't, it hasn't worked, you know. I mean, um, it, I mean you know, it was, it was worth giving a try, but it, it, it's, been a, it's been a disaster. Yeah. I mean, the, the drain on our welfare budget at the moment is 30% of it goes to... Um, goes to welfare. So um, they know every trick in the book. I mean, God, they've got some tricks. Yeah. They can't work simply because no one's going to give them a job. Yeah. If they've got to pray five times a day, would you employ someone who had to do that? No. Of course, that's going to upset the bloody apple cart a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Then they need Friday off to go to prayers. Yeah. Then after prayers, they want to go out and cut someone's head off because the Iron Man stirred them up. Yeah. So basically, they're unemployable. Mm -hmm. So they will turn to every scam gone, mm -hmm. including Hellel certification, in order to get the, yeah. the, you know, the coffers full of money. Yeah. <laughs>
Would you be able to tell us about your thoughts on the Hallel certifications? Uh, yeah, Hallel certification is um, it, it's horrific to tell you the truth. Uh, that is one of uh, I think the biggest underlying concerns that Australia hasn't really woken up to yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a two and a half trillion dollar industry run out of Saudi Arabia. Australia is overseen by um, uh, an Indonesian organisation called MUI, which uh, governs 21 separate authorised certifications, certifiers here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And each of those go to companies and say, well, you've got to pay this certification money. It can be up to 30 grand a month. And unless they do pay it, they're threatened with losing their overseas markets to Islamic countries. Uh, so they pay it. Yep. Um, but then there's a dozens of other little, little rogue certifiers that um, are getting out there and making their own million bucks at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's grown into a, a horrific uh, situation that is costing Australian shoppers uh, an awful lot of money. And uh, I've been promoting a little thing called Bicot, uh, which is on your phone and you can run your phone across the, the, um, the, the barcode on any food yeah. product and it will tell you whether it's LL certified or not. Okay. Um, that's, I think something's got to be done about that. I've got calls in there few ministers in parliament now that they just won't return my calls because they know damn well what I want to talk about. Yeah. And uh, that's a shame because it's, uh, it's only just gathering strength now. People are only just starting to understand there's a groundswell of ill feeling about it. Um, people don't want to pay a religious tax on the food they buy mm -hmm. because it has to be taxed because no company can afford to absorb those sort of costs that they're being charged by Islamic certifiers. Yeah. So the cost must go onto the product. And people have a right to know what product is halal certified and not. But because there's such a, a groundswell of complaints from people all around Australia now, the companies are taking the halal certified logo off their products. Oh, okay. So now you've got no idea what you're selling yep. or what you're buying. Mm -hmm. So, Larry, can we talk about hate preaching and terrorism in Australia? <laughs> oh, that's a bit serious, mate. It is. <laughs> um, yes, look, it, it comes back to terrorism. Um, these kids that are going overseas, uh, we're told by the media and government that they're getting radicalised over there in Syria and Iraq. I don't believe that's the case. Um, I believe they're radicalised right here, yep. uh, in the mosques, uh, and if not in the mosques, in their family or in, amongst their peers, but they're radicalised enough to want to go there because they can you know, live their dream out of, of killing people and doing what they like, raping women and little girls, whatever they want to do over there, without any penalty. Yep. And that's exciting to some people, you know, some not very nice people, mm -hmm. but it is exciting to some people that have been converted to Islam. What my solution to that is, is that um, the people that are found guilty of um, terrorist offences here in Australia um, cannot be, and those who are born here cannot be deported, um, but we have an awful lot of room in these offshore facilities at the moment. Yeah. So that's where I think they should be sent, because we don't want them here, no. because as long as they're here, they will be plotting against us and, um, you know, th th this business about de-radicalising them is just a nonsense. I mean, they're already radicalised. Yeah. I mean, to want to do what they want to do is pure radicalisation in, in essence. Mm -hmm. So there's only one way to, to combat it and that's to say, well, look, you know, we don't want you here, but we will send you to an offshore facility. So what is your message to the Australian public? Oh, just keep fighting, mate. Yeah. Keep fighting, yeah. The, look, the, <coughs> a poll was done recently by one of those official pollsters. That you would, would you vote for a party, <coughs> excuse me, would you vote for a party that um, was determined to uh, stop Islamic uh, immigration? Mm -hmm. 31, 30, almost 32, 31 point something percent said yes. Now that, that 
in itself. Um, because if you'd asked that same question five years ago, you'd have got 5%. Yeah. So the way it's snowballing is obvious. Mm -hmm. And um, people are beginning to be extremely concerned about it. So in saying that, what would your message be to the Australian politicians? Wake up. Yep. Wake up. Listen. Mm. Stop putting your head in the sand. Just listen. Listen to what people are saying. Mm. For some reason, the politicians are out of step. They're not listening. And um, they need to listen, and quickly, because if they don't, those people won't be in office, I'm telling you. That, that, that's, a, that's an absolute fact. The groundswell of opinion going against politicians that don't listen at the moment yep. is massive. Yeah, it's huge. Which brings us back to that fourth party yep. that's missing. We were hoping it would be the pups, but that's, they're disintegrated, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So someone will fill that vacuum. Whoever does successfully will be a force in Australian politics in the next 50 years. What are your ideas of freedom? I love freedom of free speech. Freedom is exactly what we're doing now. Yep. It's freedom to talk. You cannot have freedom of religion unless you have freedom of free religion. A religion must be free to leave. You must be free to leave a religion or free to go to it. Freedom to, uh, you know, have a country like ours that welcomes people into it. That was how this country was built. You can't say to somebody, you can't leave my religion or I'll cut your head off. That's not free religion. We love our immigrants. I love our Chinese. I love our Greeks. I love our Italians. I love their culture. I love their food. I love everything about them. Freedom of association is the other big thing. It's a very, very big thing. It solves the burqa problem because someone should be free to wear whatever they want to wear. Australians are one of the most content, happy, easygoing people you'll ever meet. Yeah. But when they're faced with someone who wants to change them, they will say, that's enough, mate. Yeah. That's enough. Mm. Uh, either you fit in with us or piss off. Yep. And that's what every decent Australian will say. You're watching me and Team Australia on Aussie Beach TV. TV. You're watching Ozzy TV.